Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as Debbie said, my name is Mark Scanlon, and I'm the, the chief executive of Personal Group. We are an employee benefits business. Um, I think I might be the alternate um, presenter today in that I'd like to talk about uh, our, our business and what we've done over the, over the last period and talk about, by example, some of the things that, that we've done. Uh, because I think um, looking at all of the things that have been presented and some things we've faced over the last four years, particularly, which is my, my tenure with the company, there's lots and lots and lots of stuff that, that's coming to, to eat our lunch and, and to look, look for more shares of budgets that don't exist, just like we talked about today already in regard to pension, a salary sacrifice, uh, and so on. And I think that those are going to persist, and, and they may get worse, they might get better, who knows. But I think that it is the case in, in, the, in the economy today, in, in, in in the country that costs are accelerating, the government is doing what it can to go and gather in more taxes, um, whether that's, that's going to affect uh, employees through income tax or, or through salary sacrifice, pensions and so on, I think it's going to happen. Um, I think the, the, the trick for us is to figure out, well, what are we going to do as a consequence? What, what, what is it that we're going to um, do to, to react to that? Because we've heard a lot about how we're going to see increases in cost, but what are we going to do about increases in productivity or increases in product design or increases in pricing, and get, getting more value out of what we do? because that's the natural outcome. We want to be a prosperous economy. We want to have better lives. We want to be able to earn more, but we're, we're certainly going to be taxed more. we're going to spend more. So with that in mind and, and taking the, the example that uh, I chatted through with, with, uh, with Debbie, uh, from my perspective in, in running, running the business and probably true for Annie, uh, today it, it looks like this to me. This, 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 this is a, a railway control room and there's lots and lots of levers. So the, the first lever is on, that's the power, the power is switched on. But it's, it's a choice in regard to what are you going to spend your time on. And I'm talking here about, about, about our business. So one of those levers for us is an income protection product. We have an insurance company within our business. We pushed that lever up four years ago. It was a choice. We decided not to go and do any more with it. And we may take it down again. But we have to decide what is it that we're going to do? What, what are the, the areas we're going to put our effort into? Choosing whether it's a product, whether it's a customer, whether it's our, our employees, how we motivate, how we train, how we attract and, and, and retain our employees. But they're all choices. And they're all choices that we make typically on, on an annual basis. We have our benefits program. So th this, this, is, this is the benefits program that, that, that we have. It's designed by ourselves. This is mine. Um, we have all the elements you'd expect. Um, we've spent a huge amount of time doing surveys in the last 12 months around salary sacrifice. We've added lots of salary sacrifice products to, to our employees. The, 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 the message here is that we, I think we've done quite a lot of work to be able to get that to where it needs to be. And we're quite proud of what we've been able to do. But we need to do more. And from a business perspective, we have to make sure that, that people come with us and they're going to travel the journey with us. And I'd like to explain to you how, how we've done that uh, over time. So the, the choice for me and the choice for our business is to go and choose what are the things we're going to do and what are the things that we're not going to do. Uh, that that, that um, voluntary benefits, uh, sorry, the VGIP product that we have, the income protection product, is, a, is in the up position. It, it, it sold more last year than it, it has ever done because our customers are asking for it. But it's still going to remain in the up position because we're not ready to go and exploit that product at the moment. We'll, we'll serve it when our customers ask, but we're, we're not going to do it. And these are the tough choices that, that we have to make to decide which, which, way, which way we're going to go. Michael Porter, um, you can read what it says, but strategic alignment is the, is the seamless organizational uh, the seamless organizational culture of shared purpose. Uh, and I like the line here with number one purpose of strategy is alignment. Four years ago, we set out a strategy. It's what we want to do with our company. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it can be a statement that's written, put in a box, and nobody ever sees it. Our challenge was to go and make sure that that stated ambition became the ambition and the endeavour of everybody in our organisation. And that pursuit and that effort has served us better than anything else we, we've, we've done. We had to make sure that our employee benefits programme was right. We had to make sure that we were treating people correctly. We've had changes in our own pension scheme within the business and the myriad things that, that, that you've all experienced as well. But really the, the charge that we had was to go and get our organisation galvanised behind a single purpose and a single strategy. And that strategy we wrote in early 2012 um, and hasn't changed here today. We, we test it every year so we go back and make sure that it's still true. But that's, that, that, that's how we run the business. And really what we're trying to achieve is a scenario where everybody is flying in the same direction. And it is true to say, uh, four years ago, some of the birds weren't in the sky, 
Uh, some of them were flying in the opposite direction. If they were, they weren't quite sure where they wanted to go and certainly didn't have that very efficient V formation um, that, that you see there. And, and interestingly, in our business as well, I think you'll find, you know, the, the bird at the front isn't me. The, the, I'm somewhere back here or I go up the front or others come to the front. So we run our business on the basis of people taking responsibility for what, for what they do and deciding what are the choices that, that, that they want to make in how we run the business. One of the things we spend a lot of our time doing is, uh, is speaking to our, to our employees and, and listening to what it is it that they want to do and then repeating. It's, it's, a, it's an iterative process to understand what is this going to work for us. Okay, we set out the strategy. So what? What are we going to do with it? How are we going to uh, grow that strategy? And what's, what's everybody's part within that? The way we've done it over the years is to go and have some simple strategic objectives, usually four to five, um, not a lot more than that. And then align the strategic goals and giving line of sight. Well, we are a public company, we have investors, we are regulated by the PRA, the FCA. We have a, a number of different audiences, employees, customers, our, our, our locale uh, in Milton Keynes where our head office is. So trying to align that that's all of those strategic goals is, is really important for us. And when you can do that, it works extremely well for you because you don't spend time explaining again. You don't spend time trying to shepherd people back to where they need to be. If you can be clear and you can carry that through for all of those audience, then, you, then it works. And we allow the teams to interpret. So we set boundaries, rubber boundaries we call them. We set boundaries for what people can and can't do in regard to the, the strategy that we set out. So they've got room to manoeuvre, they've got room to, to do what, what, what they want to do. And w at every turn, we're trying to set out the, the, the general direction of travel. We don't want to go and be didactic and explain exactly what everybody does from nine to five in, in their day's work. And really what we're trying to do is, is, is to shepherd, shepherd that organization um, as, as we go. I'm not expecting anybody to read what's up here, but by way of example, let, let me just talk, talk you through what, what, what this, this image represents. Um, we had three, ch we, had, we, we had two change programs. One and two were the first change programs. We're currently in our third change program with, with, within the company. So a huge amount of upheaval going on. So we went to look at our customer experience. We went to look at the way that we handled complaints, the way that we, that we, we paid our claims in our insurance business, and so on and so on and so on. But the, 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 the happy Larrys here, as they're known, at the bottom of the drawing, um, six people probably affected about 30 in our organization then. And, and that was a black start. We, we took six senior managers in our organization and said, you guys are the agents of change. You're going to help us to change how this business operates. And we need you to understand the, the strategy. We need you to go and carry that message out. And actually they affected probably about 30 people uh, in, our, in our organization. The next, the next um, tranche was CE2. It's called customer engagement. CE means customer engagement. It, it certainly was in the end, but it was amazing how much we had to do with employee engagement, how much effort we had to put into to our employees, because actually that, that we had to do that first before we got to the point where we were actually helping our, helping our customers. But then you can see here we have six, uh, 12 people influencing 60. And today we are live on our CE3 program and we have, we're influencing 200 people. The interesting thing in here is that there, there's another graph to be drawn, which is my involvement and the senior management team's involvement is going in the other direction. We're, we're not involved. So the last element here in CE3 is self-perpetuating. It's something that, that the team have taken up. I, I have very little impact upon it, set out the, the plan, but very little impact in how that works. And that's how we've grown the organization into taking ownership for what, what they've got. We have four simple values in the company, and one of them is to run it like you own it. So we want people to go and take responsibility for their job and, and for what they, can influence, what they can influence more generally in the company. And when we see ourselves getting to the levels like this, it's, it's beginning to work. And that's where we can make the choice that we only have so many people in our organization. We only have uh, you know, a set number of people. We've got to choose what it is that, that, that we're going to do. And Debbie was asking me the question, well, what is it for, for 2016? And, and, and in my mind, it is all about <laughs> choosing the things that we're going to do and choosing the things that we're not going to do and actually kind of getting on with it <laughs> because there, there's a lot that's uh, against, as I said at the very outset here, in regard to legislations and costs and so on. Our, our, our challenge really is to innovate. Our challenge is to go and make better products and do a better job for our customers. That's what we've got to do and that's going to drag, I hope, uh, my company up and it's going to drag, hopefully, more widely, other companies in the country as well. That's our task. We, we have to make sure we're compliant in regard to all the things that we've talked about this morning. But for me, it's about doing that. And the more you can take your staff with you, and the more that they're, they're doing it automatically, they like to do it, they want to come to work, they want to be part of what's, what's going on, uh, I, 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 think it's, I, think it's, I think it's working. 
the last element uh, was, was all, all about uh, bravery, and it's a, it's a small word, uh, big meaning. And when I went to research this, this, this image, and there was, there was lots and lots and lots of images. But we encourage our staff to, to be brave. We encourage them to go and do new things, to, to try the different elements. And it comes in all shapes and sizes, because it, we, we don't know exactly what, what way it, it's, it's going to work out for us. But I want to give you just, just what, one, or, one or two examples. Um, we are an insurance business at our core. We've been around for 30 years. We are a, pr a pretty well-established business. We're quite financially secure, listed on the London Stock Exchange and so on. Um, to go out and buy a technology company and having listened to John earlier on um, about how the, the government's going to abolish salary sacrifice technology, which is what that company does, um, th there was a completely different thing for us to go out and look, uh, to look for a business like that. But we did because we thought it was a fabulous product that would really augment our, uh, our product offering. But 50% of acquisitions fail, they don't work. Um, and and the, the real key in that for us was to go, obviously, do the due diligence in the acquisition process, but then to go and, as quickly as possible, assimilate that in, into our organisation. And again, we did that by explaining how we wanted to be, and, how, and obviously there was, there was a connection at the outset, you don't buy a business that's, that's going to hate you. But we, we, we wanted to go and do that, and go and transfer people into the business, and then haul the business back into the centre, if you like, to make it part of the business. And, and that business has grown, bottom line-wise, more than twofold in, in regard to its profitability in the last 24, 25 months. And again, it's, it, I won't say it's been automatic, but it's, it's been a scenario where people have wanted to do that and, and, and they've gone and, done, and felt empowered uh, to be able to do it. And, and it's, it's had a, really, a, a profound effect on, on, our, on our employees. Because think, okay, that's great. We're now offering a new product to our customers. It gives us another thing to talk about. It gives, it gives us a, an opportunity for the future. Slightly less um, uh, obvious um, for us is, is are the images I'll show you here. So we have a charitable trust as part of our, of our, our company. Um, and each, each year we, we, we give out funds to charitable causes. And I, I looked at how we were doing and um, they were underperforming. So it was very, very odd for me to sit in my office with a number of people and give them a hard time because they weren't spending enough money because we had quite a large amount of cash built up in our trust that wasn't being distributed. And once again, we gave that opportunity to, uh, to, to our employees. It was one of the things, one of the levers that we did pull down. We said, how can we go and change a single person's life? Uh, we had options to go and become part of uh, Milton Keynes' um, refuse collection in their park, which yes, we could, we could do that. Or let's, let's go and see if we, if we could affect a person's life. And, and we came across a guy who's down here in the bottom left-hand corner, Matt Norton, uh, and, and Matt is, is, is a, very, a very good guy, a uh, British guy who set up a charity in Africa. And he, for, for reasons I won't explain, he, he, he found himself in Africa and wanted to do something for children out there. And he began building schools. So he, he became a candidate for us. We had our own team who went and did that and, and within the company who went and set it up with him. And we only met Matt about 14 months ago. Um, and we invested in, in, uh, in, in, in his charity, which is called Mamusi. And the Mamusi charity builds schools in Africa. And it builds one classroom, the kids start school, they build a second classroom, and so on and so on and so on until they have a full primary school. That's how they do it. So we said we would help with that, and we invested uh, with that. And uh, two weeks ago, just remember, it's just 12 months. Within, within 12 months, we had opened our first school in Africa. Uh, we, we've been grifted 40 acres of land in southwest Kenya, where we built a school through Matt, through Matt's, through Matt's uh, uh, charity and we had 90 applicants to go to school there we had planned for 30 so we, we doubled our efforts and we made 60 we started school with 60 people in the interim period over the year um, uh, numbers of our staff have been able to go to Africa and go in, in, and have experiential learning out there uh, and they've come back into our organization um, quite different people quite amazing change that we've affected in their lives. Some of them sponsor children, some of them are going back out there again uh, this year. But we, we, we created an endeavour that, that worked so much, so much better for us. And we, we measure our employee engagement every year, and we have a pretty high level of employee engagement. I'm glad to say, if I couldn't, I shouldn't be here. Um, but we saw that go up significantly. You wouldn't believe the, the halo effect that this, that this created uh, within our business. It, it made people feel, feel so much better. But it was, it was, it was on, on, on their time and, and their decision to go and do it. And we will, in the next four or five years, end up having about a thousand children 
at school in Africa if we keep doing it the way that we're doing it. So it's, it's an adjunct activity, not one you might think of, not, you know, not one of the levers you're gonna pull forward, but the effect that it's had inside our business and the way that it's drawn everybody together to a single purpose, albeit a charitable purpose, totally different to the business purpose, it's had, it's had a huge effect. Having bought the technology business, we then decided to buy a mobile phone business. Again, quite, quite odd that uh, the personal group has got its own telephone network, but we do. Uh, and that was a, a bolt-on for this other business. Again, we had to be brave there. It's a bit of a minefield. It's, you know, it's quite a difficult business to go into. But again, we were brave enough to step out and go and, go and do that. And again, we're, we're learning quite a lot. Again, giving opportunity to employees of ours to go and run that business separately and to see if they, if they can make it work. That one is, is brand new, so we're not sure how it's going to work out. But it's not, one you, it's not something you would normally think of. It's not, it's not, it's not that usual to, to have your own uh, telephone network. Another area where, we, where we've been extremely brave is, is, in, is in the way that we sell. So uh, when we are selling an insurance product, we're presenting face to face. So you can't buy our insurance products on the telephone or over the internet. They are strictly sold in, in a one-to-one -one scenario between one of our, our sales guys and, and a potential customer. And technologies allow us to record every single one. Now we're PRA, FCA regulated. You know, the regulation is extremely, um, I guess, difficult in some regards, but very, very um, important that we get it right. And we just decided we're going to record everybody. And we already do um, <coughs> tests when we go out to observe people, but we began to record them because the iPad allowed us to do that, and they all use all use iPads. And of course, we were afraid. The, the, the fear there was that we would hear things we didn't want to hear. We would hear things that that weren't right. Um, and you know, to, to our, to our not, not to our surprise, but to I guess um, it, it was it was a real sigh of relief when we when we discovered that everything we learned from digital recording was the same as what we observed in person, which meant that people weren't acting differently when they did that. But that could have been a much different a much different outcome, and we had a very difficult time um, in, in being able to implement that. Last element I'll mention is, is uh, again protecting our business. This is a photograph that I took outside the High Court. In, in London here about two years ago, where we ended up having to fight a battle against, against, against uh, another company, um, which, which we won. Uh, we, we, were, we were successful uh, and vindicated, but the, the, the point for me here is you have to have that bravery. You have to have that, that, that go-aheadness. And that's what I think is the next step for our business. That's what I think is going to be a 2016 focus for us. Yes, we have to make sure that we have the, uh, the elements in place, as I mentioned, but really the important thing is striking out, doing things differently, picking on the things that are going to, going to win, because we have to get ahead of the cost um, wave, I guess, that's coming at us. We have to be able to go and, and, and get ahead of that. And that's it. That's it for me.